This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. When boxing fans discuss the best pound-for-pound -pound boxers in the world today, the two names that are most frequently mentioned for the top spot are Vasily Lomachenko and Terence Crawford. Alexander Usyk is also in the discussion, as are guys like Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin. Spence Jr. is in the mix too, and even a guy like Manny Pacquiao probably still deserves a spot in this discussion, following his solid performance in his recent 12-round split decision victory against Keith Thurman. Then we have Inoue Nawia. He too is certainly in the discussion, and having recently had the chance to binge watch all of his championship fights one after another, I'm beginning to wonder if this monster doesn't have the best claim as the greatest boxer in the world at this time. On April 6, 2014, in just his sixth professional bout, Inoue challenged WBC junior flyweight champion Adrian Hernandez. Inoue began the fight patiently, and before long, he was landing some nice right hands coupled with some short explosive combinations. Inoue had seized command of the action in the opening round, and he carried that momentum throughout all of the early rounds. It wasn't until the fourth round that Hernandez finally began fighting effectively on offense. The champion was battling bravely, and he was putting forth some very spirited attacks. But Inoue was taking the punches well, and he was consistently firing back in menacing style. Towards the end of round six, Inoue nailed Hernandez with a sweet right hand that dropped the champion. Hernandez made it to his feet, but he appeared badly confused and reluctant, which prompted referee Michael Griffin to wave it off. The fight was over. It was a sixth round technical knockout, and at the time of the stoppage, Inoue was pitching a 50 to 45 shutout on all three official scorecards. Inoue Noia had just become the new WBC Junior Flyweight Champion of the World. On September 5th, 2014, Inoue made the first defense of his 108 pound WBC title against Widawas Besapian. This one was a tactical battle where Besapian was looking to land big, but Inoue was fighting a very disciplined fight. As the rounds progressed, Inoue started opening up with more and more well-timed combinations. It was a largely tactical affair, and Inoue was winning the battle of tactics, with a marvelous blend of technique, ring smarts, and explosiveness. Inoue dropped Besapian in round four with some quick, crisp punching. The Sapien survived the rest of the round without further incident, but he was absorbing a real beating. In round six, another blistering combination from Inoue was punctuated by a devastating left to the body, and the Sapien was down again. The challenger bravely battled on, but he was simply outgunned and outclassed. By the later rounds, it had largely become target practice for Inoue, and the referee had finally seen enough, officially waving it off for an 11th round technical knockout. On December 30th, 2014, Inoue jumped up two weight classes to 115 pounds when he challenged WBO junior bantamweight champion Omar Andres Narvaez. Inoue started opening up with some heavy shots right out of the gate, and Narvaez was down less than 30 seconds into the contest. Narvaez made it to his feet, but he looked very badly dazed. Inoue was measured and patient as he methodically followed up and soon had Narvaez down again. The champion again beat the count, and amazingly he survived the rest of the round. About halfway through the second, Inoue dropped the champion again with a sweet counter left. As the second was drawing towards a close, Inoue unleashed an absolutely savage combination that was punctuated by two devastating body shots that had Narvaez down for the fourth and final time as referee Lou Moret counted him out. Inoue Noia had just become the new WBO Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World. On December 29th, 2015, 
and no way made the first defense of his WBO 115 pound world title when he squared off against challenger Warlito Perenas. Right at the start, Inoue didn't waste any time putting together some nice thudding combinations. Per his trademark, Inoue was doing an outstanding job mixing up his attacks while using a wide assortment of punches both upstairs and down. Inoue was jabbing well to begin round two, and before long, he unloaded two quick vicious assaults that dropped the challenger. Perenas was slow to his feet, but he beat the count as an anxious Inoue was ready to pounce. And pounce he did, as another furious assault soon had Perenas down again. Referee Mike Ortega didn't like what he was seeing, and he waved it off mid-count. It was a second round technical knockout, and the first defense of his junior bantamweight belt. On May 8, 2016, Inoue made the second defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight title when he went up against challenger David Carmona. Inoue got off to his typically patient, explosive start, and Carmona was quickly on the defensive. This was a true battle of tactics that saw a lot of maneuvering for position. From the onset, Carmona was fighting a very smart fight, despite the fact that Inoue was doing the better work. There was a lot of jabbing and posturing from both boxers early on in the contest. Inoue realized he was in there with a sound technician, so he was frequently throwing just one punch at a time while never overextending and never losing focus. Both boxers were landing, and both of them were having moments, but Inoue was consistently landing harder and sharper. Carmona remained determined and he was using excellent footwork and often winning the battle of the range, and he was frequently making Inoue miss just short. But even in the rounds where Carmona was doing his best work, he was still being outgunned by the firepower of Inoue. During the later half of the scheduled 12 rounder, Inoue was more focused on jabbing, and he was jabbing with more authority. This approach greatly diminished Carmona's output, Whenever Inoue was consistently working behind the jab, he was usually controlling the action. And when he wasn't working behind the jab, Carmona was finding all sorts of ways to do some sneaky work. Inoue started opening up more later in the fight, and in the 12th and final round, Inoue began administering a savage beating. Carmona was absorbing some blistering punishment before he eventually succumbed to the assault. Carmona was down, and he survived the count, and he bravely managed to make it to the final bell. Inoue was awarded a unanimous decision victory, with two judges scoring the bout 118 to 109, and the other judge having it 116 to 111. On September 4th, 2016, Inoue made the third defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight crown against Karun Jaropianlerd. Right out of the gate, Inoue was more active, more effective, and he was doing a fine job of making Jaro Pianlard swing and miss. Inoue was outboxing the challenger, and he was dictating the terms of the range, distance, and tempo. This trend continued, and while Jaro Pianlard sometimes had some decent isolated moments, by and large, Inoue was in cruise control and he was having little difficulty keeping the action to his liking. Karun was having some of his better moments mid-fight, but he wasn't doing enough to win rounds. And in the rare instances where he was finding success, Inoue almost always came back with something heavier and more damaging. Inoue continued controlling the action by jabbing and moving and sometimes unloading. As round 10 was drawing near an end, Inoue unleashed a prolonged, relentless barrage of menacing punches that ultimately overwhelmed European Lurk. Referee Mark Nelson counted them out, and it was a 10th round KO for Inoue. On December 30th, 2016, Inoue made the fourth defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight title against challenger Kono Kohei. Inoue began the fight jabbing with authority and controlling the action. Kono had a few nice moments in the early going, but Inoue was having more moments and better moments. 
By round three, Kono was trying hard and battling bravely, but in no way was dominating the action with some clubbing combinations. To his credit, Kono continued doing everything he could, but he was being outmaneuvered and outpunched by a superior technician. Inoue was jabbing well in the fifth, and he began landing all types of sneaky shots. Kono went on the attack early in the sixth, and Inoue smashed him with a wicked counter left. Kono managed to beat the count, but shortly after, Inoue had Kono down again and referee Robert Bird had seen enough. It was a sixth round technical knockout for Inoue. On May 21st, 2017, Inoue made the fifth defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight crown against Ricardo Rodriguez. Things began tactically, with Inoue looking to control the distance with a nice jab, excellent footwork, and short explosive combinations. Rodriguez was trying to work his way inside to attack, but he wasn't especially effective. Inoue was comfortably in control of the action as he began dissecting Rodriguez with surgical-like precision. Early in round three, Inoue dropped Rodriguez with a furious three-punch combination. Ricardo was quick to his feet, but Inoue soon had him down again, compliments of a monster left hook. This time, Rodriguez would not be beating the count. It was a third round knockout for Inoue. On September 9th, 2017, Inoue made the sixth defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight title on his American television debut against Antonio Nieves. Inoue started the fight strong and he was controlling the action with a stellar jab and some beautiful short combinations. This set the tone of the fight, and the early rounds quickly transformed into a vintage effort from Inoue. As things progressed into the middle rounds, Inoue continued repeatedly nailing Nieves with a snappy jab, and he was also beginning to mix in some nice two and three punch combos for good measure. In round five, Inoue dropped Nieves with a crippling left to the body. Nieves beat the count, and Inoue proceeded to start mercilessly digging left hooks to the body with frightening regularity. Nieves held on to survive the brutal round, but he continued absorbing a lot of punishment in round six, which ultimately caused him to revert into full retreat mode. Inoue tried persuading him to step up, but Nieves wasn't taking the bait. He survived until the end of round six, and his corner promptly stopped the fight. It was a sixth round TKO for Inoue. On December 30th, 2017, Inoue made the seventh defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight crown against challenger Johan Boyo. In the opening round, Inoue was already managing to rattle the challenger with several short heavy combinations. As the first round was nearing an end, Inoue clipped Boyo with a devastating left hand. Boyo beat the count, and the round was over. Inoue continued bringing the heat in round two, and he had Boyo looking off balance and mighty uncomfortable. Early in the third, Inoue landed a crippling left to the body that resulted in a delayed reaction knockdown. Boyo bounced up quickly, but he appeared badly hurt. Inoue jumped on his wounded foe and soon had him down again after a furious assault. Boyo again bravely made it to his feet and battled on, but Inoue easily dropped him again, and the fight was over. It was a devastating third round technical knockout for Inoue. On May 25th, 2018, Inoue moved up to 118 pounds when he challenged reigning WBA champion Jamie McDonnell. The champion was looking to jab and move and keep things at range, and Inoue was patiently stalking forward. Inoue quickly caught up with McDonnell, and he was landing some thunder to the body and head. Less than halfway through the round, Inoue wobbled the champion with a left hook high on the head, and then another two-punch combination floored the champion. McDonnell made it to his feet, and cool as an assassin. Inoue began carving through him and the referee waved it off just as McDonald timbered his way to the canvas. Inoue Noia had just become the new WBA Bantamweight Champion of the World.
It was a devastating display of power and accuracy from Inoue, who is now a three-division world champion. On October 7th, 2018, Inoue made the first defense of his WBA Bantamweight crown when he faced challenger Juan Carlos Peana. Less than a minute into the opening round, as both boxers were still in the feeling out process, Inoue fired off a quick one-two that dropped the challenger. Piano was down, and he would not be beating the count. The fight was over. And in his most recent bout, on May 18th, 2019, Inoue made the second defense of his WBA Bantamweight crown when he went up against Manny Rodriguez. It was yet another vintage powerhouse performance from Inoue. Early in round two, Inoue landed a right to the body followed by a sledgehammer hook upstairs. Rodriguez was down. He made it to his feet, but he was quickly down again after a monster right to the body. Rodriguez was bloodied, and he looked badly hurt, but he bravely continued, and by this point he was already beaten, and Inoue effortlessly put the final touches on another masterpiece performance. Simply put, Inoue Noia is one of the most complete boxers in the game today. Inoue truly has it all exceptional footwork, superb positioning, an incredible understanding of range and distance. Defensively, he's very responsible. Superb punching technique with every punch in the book. Fluid, powerful combinations. Absolutely menacing work to the body. Incredible timing with an extraordinary ability to land sharp counters. An extremely high ring IQ. And on top of all that, he has this devastating power in both hands. And even scarier yet, at 26 years old, Inoue still seems to be consistently improving his craft. I'm not entirely sure if Inoue is the one most deserving of the mythical title known as the Pound for Pound King. But if he isn't the best right now, he's definitely on a very short list. Inoue Noia is indeed a monster. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.